peace be unto you on this wonderful Sabbath day. And today we're going to continue our study of the Torah. And we are remembering that the Torah helped to provide the educational and moral foundation of the United States through the, the colonies and that the Constitution and the Torah are inseparable and that the reason why all of the things that are happening in our nation our moral decline, our loss of freedom and liberties is related to our loss of the Torah in our society. Now, we are going to start in Genesis chapter 4 that's where we left off and if you'd like to follow along you may Grab your your Bible. We are using the King James Version of the Bible. And it is always good to have a marker to help point out important parts so you can go back later. So let's go ahead and get started. And before a Adam and Eve, our first father and mother, were just cast out of the garden. And Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain, and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. And she again bare his brother Abel. And Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. And in process of time it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. And Abel he also brought of the firstlings of his flock, and the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel, and unto his offering, but unto Cain and to his offering he had not respect. And Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. Now, let's pause there. Why was Abel's offering accepted and Cain's was not? There's two reasons. The first reason is that it was not done in the way that the Lord had instructed. The Lord said to offer a sacrifice to him of, uh, of the firstlings of the flock. And the second reason is that Cain's heart was not in the right place. It was not looking for the true God. Cain had other plans. And so, what does this tell us? That there's a right way to do something, and there's a wrong way to do something. And if we're doing it the wrong way, even if though what we're doing is right, it is not acceptable to God. It's not done in the way that he prescribed. And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth, and why is thy countenance fallen? If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door. And unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. And Cain talked with Abel his brother, and it came to pass, when they were in the field, that Cain rose up against Abel his brother and slew him. So Cain, instead of taking the word of the Lord and repenting and returning he got even more angry and he uh, killed his brother and this act was done through secret a secret combination and this is the secret combination that exists today that the life of your brother has no value if you can gain benefit from it. Now, there's there's several uh, traditions uh, over uh, wh why Abel killed his brother. One is that he wanted to gain possession of his brother's uh, land. Another reason is over uh, a dispute over uh, 
a woman to marry. But whatever the reason, it was done by a secret pact that Cain had made with the devil. That the devil would grant unto Cain his desire. And Cain would kill his brother. And the Lord said unto Cain, Where is Abel thy brother? And he said, I know not, am I my brother's keeper? And he said, What hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground. And now art thou cursed from the earth, which has opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. When thou tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto thee her strength. A fugitive and a vagabond shalt thou be in the earth. And Cain said unto the Lord, My punishment is greater than I can bear. Behold, thou hast driven me out this day from the face of the earth, and from thy face shall I be hid. I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond in the earth, and it shall come to pass that every one that findeth me shall slay me. And the Lord said unto him, Therefore, whosoever slayeth Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. And the Lord set a mark upon Cain, lest any find him, and any finding him should kill him. And so, this story that we have just read is very important to us as Americans because it talks about secret works being made with the devil and that we try to cover up our evil works through secrets, but the Lord God knows all things and he will expose the secrets into the light. Now, the secret that Cain had, I, talk, I, I mentioned before, it is that the life of a brother means nothing if you can gain profit from it. That is the, 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 the basis of the thinking of the enemies of our society today. It is that our lives mean nothing to them because they are going to, they believe they're going to profit from it. And though they will do horrible acts and cause destruction on such a level, even though they, they will do all that, in the end their ideas will be torn down, they will not stand, and they will have to suffer worse than anything else before. Now, next we have a little genealogy. And Cain went out from the presence of the Lord and dwelt in the land of Nod on the east of Eden. And Cain knew his wife, and she conceived and bare Enoch. And he built a city and called the name of the city after the name of his son Enoch. And Enoch was born Erad, and Erad begot Mahujael, and Mahujael begot Methuselah, and Methuselah begot Lamech. And Lamech took unto him two wives, the name of the one was Ada, and the name of the other Zillah. And Ada bare Jabal, he was the father of such as dwell in tents, and of such as have cattle. And his brother's name was Jubal. He was the father of such as handle the harp and organ. And Zillah also bare Tubal-Cain, an instructor of every artificer in brass and iron. And the sister of Tubal-Cain was Naama. And Lamech said unto his wives, Ada and Zillah, Hear my voice, ye wives of Lamech, hearken unto my speech, for I have slain a man to my wounding and a young man to my hurt. Cain shall be avenged sevenfold, truly Lamech seventy and sevenfold. So, let's pause there. Again, we have the secret combination come out, wherein a, a descendant of Cain, and after the same order of Cain, killed a, a person who wounded him. Now, the, it doesn't really talk too much about what this wounding was. But it is, it is possible that this wounding is referring to that this man 
was involved in the secret and he basically released the secret and so they killed him. And it was this man Lamech who was the one to kill him. And so this, this idea that is so persistent in our day that our, the lives of our brothers mean nothing if we can profit from it. It is, this was from the very beginning of our history and has always been among us. And that, that's one of the reasons how a nobility got established because other people think they're better than other people and other people's lives don't matter to them. And so they elevate themselves up. And that's one of the ideas that the founders uh, fought against, as having this inequality of where some people matter and other people don't. And Adam knew his wife again, and she very son, and called his name Seth. For God said, She hath appointed me another seed instead of Abel, whom Cain slew. And to Seth, to him also there was born a son, and he called his name Enos. Then began men to call upon the name of the Lord. So now we're going to go into chapter 5, which is called the Book of the Generations of Adam. Now, what is... Why, why is the Torah so descriptive of genealogy? And I believe that is so that we can remember our uh, fathers we want to know where we came from and what they did because we will face the same problems that they did and we can do what they did because we are their children and now we this is the study of of Adam and his his lineage who we are all descended from this is the book of the generations of Adam in the day that God created man in the likeness of God made he him. Male and female created he them, and blessed them, and called their name Adam in the day when they were created. And Adam lived an hundred and thirty years, and begat a son in his own likeness after his image, and called his name Seth. And the days of Adam, after he had begotten Seth, were eight hundred, and he begot sons and daughters. And all the days that Adam lived were nine hundred and thirty years. And he died. And Seth lived an hundred and five years and begat Enos. And Seth lived at he begat Enos eight hundred and seven years and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Seth were nine hundred and twelve years and he died. And Enos lived ninety years and begat Canaan. And Enos lived after he begat Canaan eight hundred and fifteen years and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Enos were nine hundred and five years and he died. And Canaan lived seventy years and begat Mahalalil, and Canaan lived after he begat Mahalalil eight hundred and forty years and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Canaan were nine hundred and ten years, and he died. And Mahalalil lived sixty and five years and begat Jared. And Mahalalil lived after he begat Jared eight hundred and thirty years and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Mahalalil were eight hundred ninety and five years, and he died. And Jared lived in hundred sixty and two years, and he begat Enoch. And Jared lived after he begat Enoch eight hundred years, and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Jared were nine hundred sixty and two years, and he died. And Enoch lived sixty and five years, and begat Methuselah. And Methuselah walked with God after he begat Meth and Enoch walked with God after he begat Methuselah three hundred years and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Enoch were three hundred sixteen five years. And Enoch walked with God and he was not, for God took him. Now imagine that a person so uh, righteous before God and keeping his his uh, his law that that God himself took him up and he was no more on the earth. 
and Methuselah lived in 180 and 7 years in Biat Lamech. And Methuselah lived after he begat Lamech 780 and 2 years and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Methuselah were 960 and 9 years and he died. Lamech lived 180 and 2 years and begat a son and he called his name Noah saying, This same shall comfort us concerning our work and toil of our hands because of the ground which the Lord hath cursed. And Lamech lived after he begat Noah five hundred ninety and five years, and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Lamech were seven hundred seventy and seven years, and he died. And Noah was five hundred years old, and Noah begat Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Now, let's go back a little bit, because there's not a lot of historical information in here, in this, in this uh, section. It's just a genealogical account, and there are there are many traditions surrounding Enoch and our fathers, and it says here that the ground was cursed, and the the reason it was cursed can actually be found in the Book of Enoch, which is also called the first Ethiopian Book of Enoch, and that book was originally in the Bible, but it got removed by Jewish leaders and later Christian leaders as well. I personally disagree with that statement and I I have the book of Enoch and I use it and it describes this the, the, what was going on in the in the society at, at this time. And it, it basically describes how wicked the society was and I wish that section was still in the the Bible, so that we could have it. But if you would like to learn that account, you may get the Book of Enoch for free. And if you can't find one, I, I'll even if you email me, uh, send me a message with your email. I can send you a a PDF of the of the Book of Enoch. Now. Going back a little, even a little bit further, even into the previous chapter, it gives some things that were done. And these show some of the original uh, labor fields that were in the Bible. Now, first we've already talked about agriculture, and that that is the highest form of society. And we have uh, those who care over cattle, animal husbandry, and then we have uh, musicians, and then we have uh, metal workers. And that these four uh, artifacts, artifacts, um, can form a, a society as a whole. There's a fifth one also, and that's architecture, which is shown to us through the building of a city. So we have agriculture, animal husbandry, a musician. A, Actually, architecture comes next, then musician, and metalworkers. So these are the five uh, ways of labor that man ought to provide for himself and his family. So now let's go ahead and move on to Genesis chapter 6. And it came to pass when men began to multiply in the face of the earth and daughters were born unto them that the sons of God saw the daughters of men and they were, were fair and they took them wives of all which they chose. And the Lord said, 
My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he is he also is flesh, yet his days shall be an hundred and twenty years. There were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men, which were of old men of renown. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of, the th of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. So let's pause right there. Here we have some a couple ideas. And the first of which is that the Spirit of the Lord will not always strive with man, meaning that it gets to a point that when things get so bad in society that the Lord just stops, he just gives up and says the only way to fix this is through destruction. And that's when the judgment of the Lord comes upon a, a nation or society. And we are approaching that time right now as we continually uh, delve into more and more immoral actions and we seek to justify ourselves by saying that our ancestors did things that were bad as well. All of this whole th way of thinking is incurring the wrath of a just God who will give up and bring about a destruction upon the earth. The second thing is the giants of the land. Though not much is known about them for the Bible, uh, Jewish historical records describe more about it and that, and that these giants had such power because of their size that they formed tyranny over mankind and they enslaved man and made them and turned them into slaves and that they began to eat the flesh well first they ate all the the food of the people and then they started eating the animals of the people and then they started eating the people themselves now these giants in the book of Enoch are compared to the giants it says that there be giants in our day now who are these giants the giants themselves, the word comes from the Hebrew neph Nephilim, which means tyrant, as well as giant. And so, the, the, these tyrants in the days of Noah were tyrants because they had power because of their size. Now, in our modern day, these tyrants are giants and have power over these people because of their money and that they are found within the international bankers and the giant corporations seeking to control all things and they have their power because of their wealth and that it was the giants in the days of Enoch that brought about much wickedness among the people and just like in that day in our day, the giants, the tyrants, the big money powers of our day are the cause of much wickedness in our society. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and the creeping thing, and the fowls of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations, and Noah walked with God. And Noah begat three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with the violence. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, the end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Make thee an ark of gopher wood. Room shalt thou make in the ark, and shalt pitch it within and without with pitch. And this is the fashion which thou shalt make of it. The length of the ark shall be three hundred cubits. 
breadth of it 50 cubits and the height of it 30 cubits. A window shalt thou make to the ark, and in a cubit shalt thou make it above, and the door of the ark shalt thou set in the side thereof. With lower, second, and third story shalt thou make it. And behold, I, even I, do bring a flood of waters upon the earth to destroy all flesh, wherein is the breath of life from under heaven, and everything that is in the earth shall die. But with thee will I establish my covenant, and thou shalt come into the ark, thou and thy sons, and thy wife, and thy sons' wives with thee. And of every living thing of all flesh, two of every sort shalt thou bring into the ark, to keep them alive with thee. They shall be male and female, of fowls after their kind, and of cattle after their kind. Of every creeping thing of the earth after his kind, two of every sort shall come unto thee to keep them alive. And take thou unto thee of all food that is eaten, and thou shalt gather it to thee, and it shall be for food for thee and for them. Thus did Noah according to all that God commanded him, so did he. And so, that is the end of chapter 6. And... We learn that the primary cause was the violence in the earth, and that this violence can be seen in two ways, merely physical violence, but also spiritual violence. And spiritual violence is immorality. The giants brought much war into the earth, according to the tradition. and. We see today, the giants, the, the big money powers, have also caused much war all over the earth. The, they were instructed in the working of, of metal and caused weapons and armor, all manner of weapons and armor to be built. Just like today where we focus more on our weapons and defenses rather than learning to trust in the Lord our God. Now, whenever the Lord brings about a destruction, he will provide a way for his righteous to escape. Now, they will not ex escape the judgment itself, but they will be brought through it and survive. And those who survive after the judgments of God will be used to establish a brand new society that the Lord has wanted to establish since the beginning. And each time it has failed because of, of mankind. But this time, this in this last time, it will succeed for a thousand years. And we are going to stop right here with and and end on uh, chapter seven. I hope that this has enlightened your mind more in understanding that the Torah is in, is a, in connected to uh, the founding of America, and we learn today basically. The key points is that there are that there is a demonic philosophy that the life of a brother means nothing as long as we can profit from it. And the second thing is that we need to remember our ancestors and what they did so that we can know our future and what we will do. And finally the third most important principle we learned is that there will be giants in our days and that their, their strength comes from their money and not from their size unlike in the la first days but that they are the source of all the wars and violence on the earth today and all the wickedness that is being spread abroad is caused by them and that we have been fooled into following their plan uh, for our culture by giving heed to our immoral 
of desires and if we will repent now and turn away then the Lord will turn away his judgment from upon this land and part of that judgment will be the loss the complete loss of our freedom and we will face war and plagues and famine upon this land and I leave that with you in the name of the Almighty Amen